Hello everyone, this is Laiyosh. Welcome back to Life Study Library. It's getting pretty late at night, so I'm getting sleepy. But yeah, quick question to start the video. What sound do you use as your alarm? Picking the right alarm sound seems like a very unimportant topic, but it is the first thing you consciously hear in your day, and probably the last thing you consciously hear when you go to sleep. And it is understandable that we all would want to wake up to a pleasant sound, right? But if the sound is too pleasant or quiet, we might not wake up to it. So it has to be significantly loud. But we, of course, do not want to go deaf first thing in the morning. And besides, there are so many alarm sound options in our phone. So finding the right sound that will, that will pleasantly slap you in the face to wake up is quite the struggle, isn't it? So that's why in today's video, I will introduce you to the best alarm sound that you will not only wake up to sharp and ready, but also will be able to perform the will be able to will be able to perform the best for the remaining part of your day. You're listening to Life Study Library. This is your host Lai Yosh. In this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing scientific and psychological studies. So if you're interested and want to watch more of my past and my future content, then make sure to, subs to, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video and support me by doing all that. Yeah. All right. Now let's get on with today's video. So today's study is done at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Tech at Australia by the cognitive scientist Stu by the cognitive scientist Stuart J. McFarlane, and he suggests of an effective alarm sound that if you use, you might be able to wake up sharp and ready effectively every morning. And what's interesting about Dr. Stewart is that he previously invented an actual melody that improves your morning performance after you wake up. But that's not but that's not the main point of today's study, so I'll just put a I'll just put a link to it. If you're interested in downloading it, go for it. Anyways, uh let's go uh let's get going with today's video. So we all know that waking up to the right side of the bed is pretty important considering how we go for the rest of the morning or even the rest of the day. You've probably felt this before Right after you woke up, you felt energized and well rested enough to take on the day. You felt as if anything was possible, and you felt tremendously productive and work. But on other days, you felt groggy and tired when you woke up to the alarm and deeply wished you could just throw it across the room and silence it. And to make things worse, bad mornings will not only wake you up badly, but it also worsens your cognitive functions which could last for a few hours after you wake up. So doing something that requires cognitive ability and attention, like driving a car right after you wake up from a bad sleep, is undeniably dangerous. So to the main question, how can we wake up fresh and be ready for the day? Can we do that deliberately? Plenty of previous studies have proven that your blood flow in your brain is responsible for how sharp you wake up. Stuff like the different levels of our sleeping stage is important as well. We've, you've, you've all probably heard of REM sleep and non-REM sleep. And if we are able to successfully wake up during our REM sleep stage, a stage when we're sleeping lightly, we're able to wake up sharp. At this point, a question should arise. How can we successfully manipulate all this in order to wake up well rested and sharp? Today's study done at the RMIT in Australia have suggested that basically there are three components to waking up. Blood flow in your brain, your sleep level, which pretty much means whether you're in REM or non-REM sleep right before you wake up. And then there's your age. Using these three components, the researchers thought they could develop a certain kind of alarm sound that essentially boosts up the performance after you wake up. For example, the same researchers have done a different study which showed that a uh, a sound wave with a frequency of around 500 hertz was significantly more successful in pleasantly waking up infants than compared to a sound wave with a frequency of 2000 hertz. And the same researchers have claimed that the same positive effects apply to all ages of, of adults. Oh, and by the way, 500 hertz is equivalent to a whisper or a calm voice of an adult man. 
and 1000 Hz is pretty much the same thing as the voice of a woman or a small dog. And then just for reference, 2000 Hz is pretty much the equivalent of a baby crying or a regular alarm sound. I know, it's kind of hard to grasp the idea of the sound, so I have for you down in my description a link to the sound of 500 Hz. I'll wait for you. Go ahead and jump to that video and listen to it. And don't worry, it's not going to blast out music and destroy your eardrums. I mean, if it did blast out the sound, that won't be 500 Hz anymore. But yeah, I'll wait here, so go listen to it. Did you listen? Alright, let's go. So, uh... Uh, where, where was I? Oh yeah. And then I also have the sound for 2000 hertz. Neither of these are loud by any means, but the 2000 hertz sound is pretty high pitched. Just letting you know in advance. Pause this video, jump to the sound and give it a listen. Okay, you back? Alright, cool. Let's continue. So the idea is that in order to wake up sharp and ready, you shouldn't pay so much attention to what kind of sound or ringtone you make. Yeah, you should make the alarm to, and instead focus on making the frequency level within the range of 500 hertz. Remember that you're not supposed to focus on the loudness of the alarm. It doesn't really matter how loud if you if you make sure the sound is at least audible. What's important is the sound frequency. And I apologize, I made a mistake earlier. I said that the sound or the ringtone of the alarm doesn't matter, but it actually does make a difference. My bad. According to the study, rather than having a typical alarm sound where it beeps over and over, having an actual song that you like, that also happens to be 500 hertz, would be the best combo when trying to wake up fresh. The researcher suggests that a good example of these types of song is ABC by Jackson 5. I'll have the link down in my description to that as well. The study also found that the appropriate level of volume exists based on your age and this is pretty obvious, you know. Older people have a tendency to have bad hearing and a sound that's audible to younger people might not, might not always be the best choice for elderly folks. This is, a, this is a much easier issue to solve on your phone since you can always adjust your volume. So, to summarize, so, to summarize, the condition that makes an ideal alarm that you can wake up sharp to is a sound with a simple melody that you can easily sing along to if you wanted to, the frequency of around 500 hertz, a sound or a song that's not too fast nor too slow with a BPM of about 100 to 120, and young people should increase the volume. And with that, uh, Dr. Mark Farland has created the ideal alarm sound that wakes you up sharp. That sound is attached to the link down in my description. You can also purchase and download it from a downloading service, Bandcamp. So for those of you uh, who have trouble waking up sharp in the morning, try this out and be amazed. Don't worry, it's free. And one last thing I want to... And, lo and one last thing I wanted to mention is that if you're having trouble waking up because you have a bad habit of using your phone right before you sleep, obviously you need to immediately quit that habit and with that you will enjoy a good night rest and well rested morning. And, w and also while we're slightly on the topic of bad habits, I want to mention that my next topic for the upcoming few videos will be how to combat bad habits and keep or continue new ones. So be on the lookout for that. And yeah, that was pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. And now I have for you the recommended book of the day. This book is called Making Habits, Breaking Habits. Why We Do Things, Why We Don't, and How to Make Any Change Stick by Jeremy Dean. Yeah, going to the gym, reading, Quitting alcohol or sw quitting alcohol or smoking, these are only a few of the examples of habits we humans, as species, seems to w seem to wish to attain or throw away. But we also know that these habits, m but we also know that these habit making or breaking can oftentimes be a very tough quest to conquer and a deeply intimidating dragon to slay. And I'll give you a piece of the answer to this. If you're, think, if you're thinking about it, or are trying to use motivation to achieve this goal, you're not doing it right. This book teaches you first thing 
that many of these habit buildings or breakings happen with no decision making fire or any other conscious thought whatsoever. So how do we do it? To put the answer in just one word, the answer will be autopilot. I'll give you some examples. When you brush your teeth twice a day, do you say to yourself, all right, I'm gonna brush the heck out of my teeth and clean them so well today? I'm guessing the answer is no, right? You do it on autopilot and you do it every day. Okay, I'm gonna spoil the book if I say anything anymore, so that's it for the, that's it for the sneak peek. The remaining part of the book you'll have to actually read to understand. And then for my video recommendation, that I suggest you to watch it after this one, of course, is called Easy to Fix but Easy to Attain, Deadly Habits that Lead to Unwanted Weight Gain. This one talks about the athletic side of unwanted habit gaining and the controlling of it, and I suggest you give it a listen. And once again, the main topic of today's video, the scientifically ideal alarm sound you can use to wake up sharp and ready. The link to the sound is all in the description, so go check that out. And if anyone would like to send me any thumbnail designs, I use them without any exceptions, so yours will be used maybe not immediately in the next video, but soon enough. So please send me some pics as well. My email is down there too. And I think that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and list and learned something from it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe too. Life Study Library, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.